Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is a special bonus podcast episode where I wanted to talk with you more about the current conjunction between Jupiter and Juno in Aries. This conjunction occurred January 22nd, 23rd, 24th at four degrees of Aries and begins a new cycle between Jupiter and Juno in the cosmos. And I wanted to discuss this more and go into the energies because it's happening in Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, and in the very early degrees of Aries at four degrees. And so this is something to be aware of in yourself, especially in regards to soul contracts, commitments, partnerships, intentions, and where you are placing your energy in something that you believe in, that is a cause for you, that is important to you, how you are honoring it, how you are intentionally working with it. So we're going to discuss some of these energies in this shorter podcast. And I wanted to call this out for you because it could explain perhaps if you're feeling a new start of some kind, if you're feeling these energies in a supportive, evolutionary manner, if you're ready to do things differently, if you're ready to make commitments in a new way and in a higher way. So I'm going to discuss this more in today's show. Now, Juno is an asteroid located between Mars and Jupiter. That is one of the asteroid belts in our solar system. And it's very interesting to look at how that particular asteroid belt is located between the end of the personal planets and the beginning of the transpersonal planets. So in astrology, the personal planets are the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Then we have the asteroid belt there, then the transpersonal planets, which are Jupiter and Saturn, and the transpersonal planets move slower, uh, but they also move faster than the outer planets. So we have these asteroids located between Mars and Jupiter, and they bring up even more of how we are evolving and also connect us to more of our feminine energies, what we are here to develop in our self-expressions through the archetypes of each asteroid. And with Juno, Juno is typically associated with marriage, commitment, intentions, where you show up and honor what you have obligated yourself to. Juno is also how you are looking to partner in this lifetime, the types of partnerships you are drawn to or you wish to seek out and create. And this is why Juno can relate to marriage and long-term commitments. But I wanted to go into some of the mythology here between Juno and Jupiter as they were husband and wife in Roman mythology. It's important to note that Roman mythology is based on Greek mythology. The Greeks were here first. The Greeks developed more of their mythology and what they believed. They were a more civilized population. They're often seen to be more refined and elevated than the Romans. And so the Greeks had a very extensive understanding of various gods, goddesses, and of course the mythology that goes along with it. Then the Romans came along and said, we like what you're doing. We're going to do that too, but we're just going to change some names. So Jupiter and Juno are the Roman names for Zeus and Hera, although they aren't exactly the same, meaning Zeus is slightly different than Jupiter and Hera is slightly different than Juno. And we can see this in terms of how the Romans interpreted Greek mythology. So yes, they are similar and you might hear their names used interchangeably, but there's actually differences between how they were viewed by the different populations. And of course, we can apply this to the different states of consciousness that each population held, where the Greeks had a different understanding of energies and consciousness than the Romans did. So I just wanted to call that out because I know people often have questions about the two or about comparable names. 
So basically, it is the Greeks who originated a lot of these stories and mythology, and then the Romans came in and said ditto, and basically created their own interpretations of those same gods and goddesses. So when we're talking about Jupiter and Juno, they were married husband and wife, but Jupiter was not monogamous. Jupiter was not faithful or committed in the ways that we understand it today, and Juno was in this commitment to a man who was running all around town, doing as he pleased, being the ruler of the gods. And she had her other commitments to uphold as the queen of the gods. She was also known for how she showed up in partnerships, how she honored her partnerships, and also her caretaking and maternal abilities. So we have Jupiter and Juno that we recognize as a duo, but of course there were things that were not going great in that connection or in that relationship. And this can hold a lot of archetypal understanding for us in terms of the commitments we seek out, the marriages that perhaps you are in or have been in or take vows to be in, and also what it brings up about what that means to be in a commitment. So when we have Jupiter and Juno conjunct in Aries, in the very beginning of the whole zodiac wheel. So keep in mind, this conjunction was at four degrees of Aries, and there are 360 degrees in the whole astrological wheel. So it's truly beginning a new cycle here, but looking at at a personal level, based on who you are, your own self-identity, what type of commitments honor and support you? And I actually believe this could be something that brings us to the heart of soul contracts, the soul contracts that we are here to complete and end, the soul contracts that are meant to be healing and supportive, the soul contracts that we're here to initiate and experience in this lifetime. And when we look at these archetypal themes where, yes, this was a husband and wife commitment, but it wasn't healthy, it wasn't monogamous, what does that mean for you? How does that show up for you energetically in terms of who you are now? Because Aries is about your sense of self, how you chose to be an individual in this lifetime what it means to know yourself, to have the courage to be yourself, and to also stand with a sense of courage and trust in your own energies. So all of this is coming up for us to be aware of and to work with so that you can basically elevate soul contracts or you can be very conscious of what you do agree to, the partnerships you do form, the areas where you say, yes, I want that. Yes, I will honor that. Yes, I will take a vow or a pledge or a commitment to something because I know it's best for me. It's interesting too how this is occurring in Aries which again, it's known for the sense of self, but how you fortify your own energy is then what others feel. And this is what creates standards. This is what creates a certain level of energy that must be reached. It's like you have to be at the same frequency or same vibration as others in order for them to be your equal, in order for them to be a true partner. And if that isn't the case, they fall away. They leave. The universe will remove them and put them on a different path. The universe will remove you and put you on another path if the energies are not a match, if the frequency is not clear and stable. So what we have here is an understanding that it's time to look at what commitments you're making to yourself to honor what you need and what you want, what you wish to create and manifest in relationships, partnerships, commitments of all kind, but from a place of higher consciousness, from a place of understanding what you've been through, what the previous cycles have taught you or shown you, where you have learned more about your own energy, your own healing, your own journey. And now what have you come to understand that could be fresh, clean, new? It's like open space. The universe is giving us a carte blanche here where we can say, this is what I declare is true for me. This is what I will allow in my life, in my world, in my energy, and anything else is free to go. 
Anything else can please move away and is not welcome into my space simply because it's not an energetic match. And so this is where we can then form new soul contracts that are healthy, loving, equal, kind, trustworthy, honest, reliable, and on and on it goes. This would be the time to make a list or really understand what you require in your life in terms of these connections and partnerships. So this is more of an internal exercise because it's in Aries, but this is where, again, you're setting the standard. You're declaring to the universe, this is what I will allow. These are my requirements. This is what has access to me. And so this is a beautiful starting point of being in your power, standing strong in your self-worth and your personal value. Also recognizing where you're done and complete with certain soul contracts contracts, certain connections, certain people that just aren't right for you because they're not at that same place in their soul growth. And this doesn't mean there's anything wrong or that there's anything you have to do or correct. Rather, this is a recommitment to self. And that's how I'm feeling this energy with Jupiter and Juno is that we're really being asked to stand in the power and confidence of what you want in this lifetime, to not compromise, to not dilute it, to not think you have to go back and do a bunch of do-overs or that you have to spend all this time or energy investing in things that aren't paying off or aren't showing up. This is where there's new beginnings here, a brand new start, and it's meant to be something that lifts you up, that feels good, and in fact, this could be something you're doing for the first time in this lifetime or for the first time in your soul's journey where you've been through perhaps a lot of variations and versions of partnerships. You've been through a lot of things that have shown you more about human nature, free will, people's perceptions and choices they make. There's also something to be said here about how Juno was very aware of betrayal. Juno was very aware of infidelity and what her husband was up to. And what she had to maintain, think of saving face in front of a whole population or remaining strong in her duties and obligations. But think of how at the same time, that type of ongoing betrayal from a husband or partner can do a number on your heart, on your self-esteem, on your self-worth, how those kinds of energies are something that she would have felt. And so I feel like this energy is also a revival of Juno's expressions. And this is where we're being invited to stand stronger and clearer in what you know your worth and that there's things that you don't have to participate in. I'm also getting the visual here that it's part of rewriting gender roles, traditional gender roles, which we've been doing, but also there's something here where you're actively claiming that it's really about energy. It's less about certain visuals or I would say even a resume. It's not about someone's resume. It's about the energy. It's about what is acceptable for you because you've been through enough that you understand how you desire to be safe, to be supported, to be an equal, to be respected, to be cared for. And this is how we are also evolving as a species, evolving in our own consciousness and energies, is that we are fully aware of what we won't tolerate, what we won't allow in our lives. And we're doing some deeper work here to perhaps heal those parts of ourselves or even those soul contracts that were unfulfilled, that just weren't cutting it. Again, there was something missing. It wasn't enough. It wasn't good enough. It was always like there was a lack. And I think that part of what this Juno in Aries energy can do is remind you of your power as a creator 
And that Aries energy is very much about creation. It's the first spark of creation. It's about that inspiration and motivation to say, this is what I want. This is where I'm going. This is what matters to me. So you could have something here energetically coming through for you that's revealing how you're ready to do it differently, how you are different, how you are showing up differently, how perhaps you've healed a lot of soul contracts. You've healed a lot that no longer even has room or space in your energy. It doesn't connect. So it's almost like if somebody were to show up with certain qualities or attributes, you might say, oh yeah, they have a nice face, or oh yeah, there's good things about them, but it's still not enough because now you have higher standards around what is true for you and where you're going to invest your own energy, where you're going to show up. So this is also where the people who aren't good for you, who aren't right for you, fall away. And the universe takes care of that. The universe takes care of that in very beautiful ways so that you can continue on your path and understand what you're about. And then of course, that allows the right connections, the right partnerships, the right people of a similar frequency to show up and come through. Now, I'm feeling like this energy, because it's in Aries, it's very fiery and impulsive. It could also be necessary to watch how you act, to not be too impatient or get too frustrated too soon, to be aware of anything with perhaps your temper or an immediate reaction. But I also feel like what we're understanding here is that there is a rebirth in commitments and partnerships because of what you know is true for you. The healthy expressions of Juno want commitments that are fair and equal, wants justice, wants there to be that equal giving and receiving dynamic. And that's also, in fact, how Jupiter in Aries is evolving, where this Jupiter in Aries can be wildly independent, want to do everything on his own, be very comfortable doing his own thing in his own ways. But this is also a connection point here with Juno that reminds Jupiter that it's okay to work with others. It's okay to have support and good quality connections. You don't have to do everything on your own. Yes, you can have the freedom and space to follow your own path and be your own person, but you don't have to cut off relationships. You don't have to shut down people who are healthy for you, who are good for you. In fact, the more that you have those people around you, the more energized you could feel. So the Jupiter-Juno conjunction in Aries feels like an elevation in our own consciousness of what true partnership is, of what equal commitment is, what that means to you. I also feel it too in Aries as not sacrificing your independence, not giving up who you are. And if you've been in a long-term relationship, you probably have felt that push and pull between the needs of the partnership versus the needs of the individual? And how do you maintain your sense of self in a relationship? And that can be a very unique formula for each partnership or each couple. That can be something that you figure out. That can also be something healthy that's developed where you don't feel like you're abandoning yourself or you're sacrificing your needs or everything you want for the sake of the other. And in fact, that can lead to codependency and resentment and a lot of other things. So this is where it's very important to look at who you are as an individual and how your individual needs are still being honored in connections, in partnerships. And maybe there's something new here that you're realizing needs to be introduced into these partnerships. Maybe there's something that you're realizing you lost along the way, or you haven't been in touch with a certain part of yourself. Maybe there's things you just have had to give up and you realize it's been sinking your energy. So how do you reintroduce that into a connection? How do you bring that in to a healthy partnership so that you are very aware of who you are as an individual and that is also supported in the dynamic and in a connection that is meaningful to you? Now, in your natal chart, your natal Juno will reveal 
what you are consciously seeking out in a partner or in a marriage or commitment. And if that is something you even want in this lifetime, because fair to say, not everybody wants that. Not everybody's interested in that. But that's part of what the Juno archetypal energies showcase is how you are looking for certain energies in a partnership. At the same time, this Juno can also reveal how you deal with inequality in partnerships with someone who is not faithful or monogamous, if that's what you desire. It can reveal how you trust others, how you trust a partner or not. It can reveal as well, your soul might have had lifetimes of experience of betrayal by an intimate partner or by someone close to you in your life or in your world. So these energies are being highlighted at this time, but there is a new chapter beginning with this Jupiter conjunct Juno in Aries. Now Juno is going to move ahead of Jupiter and she typically spends about two months in each astrological sign, not including a retrograde phase. So Juno entered Aries on January 13th and 14th, and will stay in Aries until March 11th or 12th. So this is where there are new energies coming in, coming forward, coming up, perhaps within you. And again, this might be a good time to ground it, to write it in, to write it down, what you declare you will allow into your life, into your world, how you will also show up, how you do commitments, how you're raising your standard for yourself in terms of what you're going to participate in and how you desire to be a better partner or committed individual in these connections. The highest expression or one of the highest expressions of this conjunction between Jupiter and Juno is setting the intention for healthier partnerships. And this can then bring in these connections that are brand new, that are more conscious, that are very different perhaps than other partnerships or connections you've had before. And this is because of your own journey and also what you're seeking out in others in terms of the conversations you want to have, how you want to enjoy your time together, perhaps the goals you set or the things that you enjoy doing that really strengthens the energy between the two of you. So this could be a time when you're really committed to healthier partnerships, what that means for you, how you're willing to do it differently as well. Because as we grow up, we could look back on perhaps some of our earlier partnerships or relationships that were formative in some way, but perhaps immature. Perhaps they weren't really the best way to handle disagreements or fights or things that came up between the two of you. Now you can make a commitment to say, okay, I'm going to be a healthier individual here. I'm going to be more honest and forthcoming. I'm going to be trustworthy. I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to move into these parts of myself that I feel safe sharing with the right people. So this is a powerful time to set these intentions, make these declarations to the universe as well as to yourself. Because again, this energy is in Aries. So it is about the self. It is about what you are wanting to animate and activate in yourself because it's who you are now. It's authentically you. It's true to you. And again, anything that's not authentic, it leaves. Anything that isn't true, honest, real, mature, and forthcoming also falls away. And the universe takes care of those things because it recognizes your frequency, your vibration, who you are, and what you deserve. I feel like this is where, again, you can raise the bar and basically have even better than what you've experienced before, if that's your commitment to yourself, if that's what you desire. But remember your power as a co-creator with the universe. Remember your power as a manifester and that when you set the standard, the universe responds in kind. You are the one who declares with your sovereign energy what you want in your life. What is best for your heart? 
what is best for your energy and your sense of safety and how you wish to connect and how you desire even to experience passion and beautiful energies with others. So this is where you get to be fully in command of what you allow into your life. And there could be reasons to celebrate here. There could be big turning point reasons to celebrate where you understand a lot. You see perhaps your own unconscious habits. You see what soul contracts were not up to par because of choices and decisions that others were making. You can then come back to yourself and stand in this beautiful sense of self that knows your journey, and also knows what you're going to experience and create next. So I do feel this energy to be encouraging overall and positive and uplifting. It does depend on how you connect with Aries energy, of course, and whether this is something that you're noticing already in your life. So again, look at where you have the early degrees of Aries in your chart, specifically three, four, and five degrees of Aries, as this is where the new energy is being initiated and coming through. So I just wanted to give you these insights to be aware of and to sit with. I will be doing more of these focused episodes on the asteroids as significant transits come up. I do enjoy the asteroids. I do have a separate playlist for you on YouTube describing the asteroids in your chart the energies that they're about, their archetypes, their mythology, their themes. So if you want to go even deeper into your astrology chart, please check out my YouTube playlist called Asteroids, Goddesses, and Dwarf Planets. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday for another podcast episode where we look at the ongoing astrological energies of our time. Thank you so much for joining me and please check out my website over at mollymccord.online where you'll find a number of astrology programs and courses that help you dive into more of your own energy. And I even have a course all about the astrology of relationships that shows you more of what to look for in your own chart around partnerships, friendships, business connections, and even more. Since basically, we are in relationship with all energies in our lives. So do check out that course if you want to learn more. I'll see you back here very soon. Thank you so much for joining me and wishing you a beautiful day ahead.